Hello everybody and welcome back to Rainbow Crafts. My name is Colton and today we will be showing you how we made our Blue Moon inspired soap for our March Lucky Charm soap collection. This soap is a really good take on a kind of more masculine scented soap. So stay tuned if you want to see how we make this Blue Moon inspired Lucky Charm soap. Alrighty, let's get this soap making started. So if you've been around for a while, you know the drill. We will start out our soap just like we always do, and that is by pouring our lye water uh, with some sodium lactate in it into our signature plant-based oil blend. And that blend is down in the comment section below. Uh, feel free to use that for your own soap. If you do use our soap recipe, please uh, share those photos with us on Instagram. Um, we would love to see those. We'll blend that up until it is at a light trace and then we will strain in our colloidal oatmeal and our water just to kind of give the soap a nice silky smooth texture on the skin. Um, oatmeal is just a really great additive for that. And then we'll blend that up and strain in our fragrance oil and our kaolin clay. The fragrance oil is dad bod from nature's garden and we have used this in the past i want to say it was from june from our pride collection or maybe from last may but i'll put a uh, comment thing up in the corner and you can check that out it is kind of woodsy um very like earthy i really really like it um zach's not the biggest fan of this fragrance so and that's um, kind of interesting because normally we're pretty similar in our fragrance preferences and then if you saw our video from Tuesday, you will have seen how I kind of determined what the design is going to look like for this soap. And so we are dividing the soap up into three main sections and they'll all be shades of blue. And then I am keeping a section on the side that is just completely uncolored because I want to add a little white into the in the pot swirl. It just kind of helps brighten everything up a little bit um, and kind of make all of the other colors really pop. So the, uh, that blue mica that I'm putting in there is the storm blue or stormy blue from Brambleberry. I really, really like this one. It's kind of a grayish blue. It's really pretty. It looks kind of like storm clouds. And then this one is just straight up blue mica from Brambleberry as well. So very like um, elementary school, kind of um, very vivid blue. And then the third blue, which really looks kind of more dark, kind of blackish, dark gray, is Interstellar, which is a really cool deep dark blue from Mad Mica. But there's some gold, like larger mica flakes in there. So you actually get a little bit of the glitter in the finished soap bar, which is a really cool effect. And we will just blitz those up really quick to get all of the mica distributed evenly. I'm going to start lightest to darkest. So um, the stormy blue one first and then to the blue mica and then the one in the very back. Uh, they're all going to get mixed up eventually, but I do ideally want to keep the colors pretty separate because they're very different. And I didn't want to pull the dark color into the lighter blue and have them be too similar. And then this is just an in the pot swirl so it can be pretty rough um, i'm just gonna pour almost all of the soap into the mold um, i'm gonna keep aside a little bit of the micas uh, a little bit of the soap batters to do some um, kind of textured effects on the top and then the soap batter did set up just a little bit not anything to be concerned with so i just stirred up that uncolored soap base poured it in and then we will pour that soap batter into our slab mold. And I wanted to do kind of forward to backward pours just to do some nice like linear swirls. And then we'll just scrape out the container of all of that soap batter. And we're done with this container so we'll just set it aside after we get as much of the soap out as we possibly can. And then off camera, I just patted the top down to smooth it out just a little bit, but we're gonna do a design so it doesn't have to be completely flat and level. And then that remaining soap batter that was in the separate molds or separate uh, dishes, we'll just scrape that out as well. And this can be pretty messy also because we're gonna kind of 
mush it all together and make it look a little bit like the bonfire soap we made uh, during the summer. We're gonna use a spoon and kind of like uh, smush it all over the place, kind of make it look like flames. But in this instance, I was going more for like space, kind of nebula-esque designs. This collection was a fun one to make because it was pretty like confined in terms of the shapes we were going for, but also very vague because all of the marshmallows taste the same. They don't have any different flavors. So we could kind of just use that color as a launching point and the name as a launching point and go from there. For the top, like I said, we're just gonna use our spoon and do a whole bunch of just randomized kind of swoops all over the place just to get those colors nice and mixed together, but not too much because we don't want this to turn into a solid um, blue one shade bar. We want it to be individualized and swirly and space-like and all of that. And then I did also spritz a little bit of some sort of mica that was in our atomizer here. I think it's just like snowflake mica and that adds a nice shimmer to the top of the soap even when it hasn't been steamed. This hasn't been steamed yet. Um, we just spritz it with some rubbing alcohol and tuck it away for 24 hours and that is the top. It's exactly what I was going for. Nice and very like artistic and painterly. And then we'll split that slab up and those nice uh, linear front to back swirls is exactly what I was going for because when you cut it you get some nice uh, chunky colors. It's not too mixed together which sometimes in the pot swirls especially if you mix it up too much um, or the soap batter is not the right consistency it really can look not super great. And then once all those uh, loaves are split we will break out Dorothy and slice those up and that is exactly what I was going for. You can see all of the different shades of blue. The little bit of white kind of adds a little extra interest in there and kind of breaks things up because when it's all one color it sometimes looks a little monotonous or even a little muddy and this just makes it all look a little bit better. And we will just continue slicing away with our soap cutter but we're not done yet. Um, because like I mentioned on our video from Tuesday, we also will be stamping this soap with a cute little triple star like rubber stamp in some mica. And we used the Blue Enigma mica, which is like a really cool white mica with a blue shift. So if you kind of like wiggle the bar around, you can see like a blue kind of color going on there for stamping just like we do like we talked about last uh, week we dip and I'm sorry we didn't use stars we used moons stars don't make sense moons do because this is a blue moon soap um, we do have a shooting star soap as well that is coming out um, but we have some of that mica on a little paper towel or a napkin and then we dip the stamp we kind of tap off the excess mica and then just go ahead and stamp in the corners um, and that's really simple as that. But that is it. That is our Blue Moon Soap which will be for sale March 1st online and in person so definitely check this out if you are interested. If you do want to support the channel, we do have a subscription service where you can get soaps or candles of the month from us that we'll send directly to you and those soaps will be from our collection that will be for that month. So um, if you sign up now, you can get our April soaps a little bit early. Um, so definitely check that out on our website if you're interested. We really, really appreciate all of the support from all of our subscribers. Another way to support the channel is to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.